South Korea is bracing for the implications of the election outcome in terms of not just politics and diplomacy, but also the domestic economy and industries. Our economics correspondent Moon Hedion joins us in the studio to tell us more. Hedion, trade and tariffs are key elements here. Walk us through how this might be affected by the election. Yes, so the two candidates, incumbent Vice President, uh, Democrat Kamala Harris and Republican Donald Trump, propose very different uh, tariff policies. Harris supports a targeted tariff strategy affecting specific goods and countries, while Trump plans broad tariffs of 10 to 20 percent on nearly all imports, with higher tariffs on Chinese goods. His tariffs would replace the Inflation Reduction Act and the CHIPS Act as a means to incentivize companies to establish U.S.-based operations. This shift has caught the attention of South Korean companies as these laws directly influence their investments in U.S. facilities. The IRA has been giving tax credits to South Korean electric vehicle battery companies such as LG Energy Solution and SK On. The Chips and Science Act gives companies subsidies to build plants in the U.S. Samsung Electronics is due to receive up to 6.4 billion U.S. dollars of subsidies to build its foundry in Texas, while SK Hynix is due to receive four hundred and fifty million dollars in subsidies to build its packaging facility in Indiana. If a future Trump administration cuts subsidies, it would reduce the appeal of South Korean investments in the U.S. and strain their finances. Experts say that this is, however, an unlikely scenario. In order to remove the subsidies, President Trump will have to remove the laws, and that will require approval from Congress. So not only will uh, Trump have to become the president, but the House of Representatives and the Senate both have to be in Republican hands. That being said, it's important to think about the intentions behind such statements. It's unlikely that the CHIPS Act will be brought to a halt, but this is more of a signal to say that he wants more commitment from overseas companies to invest in the U.S. Uh, you talked about a higher tariff on Chinese imports. What impact could the trade war, potential trade war between the U.S. and China have on Korean industries. Yeah, so Trump has currently proposed a 60% tariff on all Chinese imports to the U.S. and even higher tariffs on Chinese-made vehicles to stop them from entering through Mexico. South Korea closely monitors U.S.-China trade moves as its economy, especially in semiconductors, heavily depends on both markets. Major players like Samsung Electronics and SK Hynix rely on exports to both countries as critical parts of global tech supply chains. Here's what an expert said. The majority of our semiconductors are used in smartphones and computers, with China responsible for 60 to 70 percent of exports, so this is likely to take a hit. However, trade tensions with Beijing would likely persist even if Harris were elected. The Biden-Harris administration has targeted tariffs on Chinese EVs, solar cells and steel and aluminium, as well as finalizing restrictions on U.S. investments in advanced tech in China. While South Korea's finance ministry expects limited impact on domestic industries, markets remain cautious. And what are some other implications of these tariffs outside the industrial setting? So the reason why Trump's tariff policies are appealing to some voters in the U.S. is because they think that if these tariffs are imposed on foreign products, this will increase the price of these imports to make domestic goods more competitive. However, economists say that this additional cost could be passed down to businesses and consumers. Trump's proposed policies, even though perhaps they're not as specific as Harris's, announced policies will have higher uh, inflationary measures. That is 
An estimate from an American think tank tallied the annual cost of the proposed tariffs at $2,600 US dollars for a typical American household. This comes as manufacturers using imported materials may face higher costs, which they could then transfer to buyers by raising prices on products. And products with limited domestic alternatives could become even more expensive for consumers. This could have a global impact if interest rates are increased to tackle inflation, as central banks around the world, including the Bank of Korea, look to the Federal Reserve's monetary policies. Right. Uh, thank you, Hedion, for the update. Thank you for having me.